Walmart.com is moving way faster yes. than Amazon.com. Yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. So it's like they also have a roadmap and they know exactly where they're mm-hmm. going and what they're doing. So it's like they're moving really quickly and it's impossible, almost impossible, I should say, as a brand owner to be really in tune with all the changes that are happening. And that's why, you know, it's so important to be able to just make those changes really quickly because otherwise you get left behind a little bit, a little bit more, a little bit yep. more until it's too late. Hello and welcome to White Label Advice. My name is Brooke McNeely. I'm the VP over here at White Spider. We are here with our esteemed guest, Michael Lebhar, the CEO of Cellcord, and then our founder, CGO, Eric Eric Howerton. Welcome, you guys both. Thank you. Thank you, Brooke. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah. Thank you guys for being here. And uh, Michael, so you have been selling online for a little while now. Can you tell us a little bit about your background? Like, how did you even get started selling online? And like, where did, was was Amazon the first place that you sold online? eBay? Oh. What was it? Let's, let's let's go all the way back. This oh wow, this is a fun story. So, um, I was I think I was just coming out of tenth grade, um, going into eleventh, and. I was always like hustling different things and I was like, I just need to stay busy. Uh, <laughs> even though my school kept me busy, like it was long days, but um, I was like, yo, I just want to make money. It's fun. This, so I was doing a lot of odd jobs um, and then a lot of odd small businesses too. And then one of my, um, one of my friends, my family friends, um, there were four brothers and they were just killing it. Um, and I'm like, I don't know what you guys are doing, but I just got to do it. Just, just t- teach me how to do it. So at that point they were selling on Amazon. Um, they did really well. They have, they have a really large brand who's actually, they actually have a lot of SKUs in Walmart. Um, but I'm like, just teach me how to do it. Um, and you know, they gave me a lot of the background. I'm like, this is really cool. So we started looking into, you know, just sourcing products, seeing how it works. Um, so in the beginning we started selling on eBay and I remember like we, I, we, we sourced like these workout gloves <laughs> and, um, I got like a few hundred sets of them and you know um it What's was a workout glove so it's like um gloves to like to, for when you're weightlifting okay, like and stuff yeah, like that. That. yeah. <laughs> i was like you're like that's pretty intense Dude, dumb like, a glove. Yeah. Arm curls and stuff. <laughs> yeah and i remember i listed it and then during class like my phone was just vibrating and i was like i go I, we weren't allowed to take our phone class i go to the bathroom and I just look it's just all these emails of these sales i was like that feeling oh i'll never get it again <laughs> hopefully if i close this walmart contract like it'll feel like that but yeah. like i'm waiting for that rush again but that feeling was so good and then i'm like okay we have to like really work on this look into it more so we started doing a lot more research and we, i really i really I fell in love with the idea of like creating, creating a brand really early mm-hmm. on in the platform. This is around like, I think seven, maybe more years ago. Um, so right away we started selling on Amazon. You know, my family friends, as I said, were selling a lot on Amazon. There were four young brothers and just hustling it out. They had a few hundred thousand square foot warehouse. Like wow. they were killing it. So I was like, you know, we're going to figure this out. We started selling different products on Amazon, growing them on Amazon. And, you know, it was really early in the platform. Um, I was in school still, so it was hard. I was bouncing back and forth, you know. Um, you know, I was high school, right? High school, high yeah. School. <laughs> it's so funny. You're so motivated. I in forgot about school, that. <laughs> I was a sophomore in high school. I was like working at Toys R Us and going <laughs> yeah. to grunge concerts. Like that. That was like a great day. And for me. and therein lies all the problems. All the problems, yeah. Really random, so but motivated. I love Toys R Us because um, <laughs> when they went bankrupt. Yeah. Um, I got to buy like tons of their warehousing shelving. It was oh, right nice. when we got there a new warehouse. Go. And thank, you, yeah. <laughs> thank, you, time, yeah. thank you, Toys R Us. Thank you, Toys R Us. But <laughs> <laughs> it was great. So we started selling um, a lot. Of, and we, it was, at first, we were selling a lot of different products. But I realized because it was kind of coincidental that our first product were, was workout gloves. And I was really at the fitness at the time. Not so much anymore. <laughs> but <laughs> um, I, I just I wanted to focus a lot more on it. And we started building a brand around it. And what I saw became so interesting is like once you build a brand, it's like every effort you put into one product, you know, it's really multiplied and there's so mm-hmm. much create room for creativity. So really start expanding on Walmart, I'm sorry, on Amazon. And I'm like, you know, we built this brand, this line of really good products, like all that a- Amazon allowed us to do that because of all this extra effort that we had to put in. And, you know, it, it allowed us to actually, we wouldn't have been able to invest. We didn't have the money to invest in, you know, developing these products and all that. But Amazon was a process that allowed us to do that. Like now we have this built out brand and it's a pretty awesome brand. Why don't we just list it on other marketplaces? Right. So we started listing on a lot of other marketplaces and selling on other marketplaces because that's really the hardest thing is like developing the brand, developing the products. And Amazon was kind of a process that allowed us to do that. But now I'm like, why don't we list it on other platforms? So we were list- we were selling on Groupon. Obviously, we we're selling on eBay. We were selling on HSN. We were selling, you know, on um, a little bit later on Target.com and Walmart.com. 
We listed our products on walmart.com. So what made you want to make that switch? Like, did you hit like a, le like a level? You were so, like, you know what? I want to make more money. So I'm going to put it on more places. So honestly, it was more about diversification um, for risk investment than it was about um, making more money. Um, something that I saw that happen with um, with with Amazon was it was getting more and more challenging for us. Um, you know, a lot of international sellers were coming on board, playing mm -hmm. you know brutal game. They were just you know um, getting us bad reviews, taking our listings down for different you know false claims and things like that. Right. And it was kind of challenging because it's like you build your business and you know you're 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 run kind of nimble. You don't have funding, you don't have financing, you can't really do that. And it's like you know your account gets shut down because of something. And it's like right now you have to pay your employees, you have overhead, you have to, and it's like yeah. it's really difficult. So it's like I really really wanted to diversify um, and you know diversification comes with challenges because it's way harder to focus so like if you have a channel you could really just focus in on it's the best but with us like we had to diversify so um, Walmart was one of those channels and I think what was so great is that you know it's not a lot of extra work at that point it was really we have our brand we have our products like let's listen on other platforms and we were just making sales and w once I realized we were making sales and it was the only other platform that was growing substantially mm -hmm. I was like what if we put a little bit of extra focus there maybe it can make sales that are actually worthwhile like that you know it, it will make a lot more sales because maybe nobody else doing i'm like let's try it so we started putting extra focus in understanding walmart understanding the platform and just making slight adjustments and we were saw we were growing exponentially because not only we were doing what the platform wanted nobody else was doing that yeah on the platform at the mm -hmm. time you know this is probably four years ago so we started putting a lot more focus, you know, actually doing that for all our products. And eventually our focus a lot shift to walmart.com because we kept having more and more challenges on Amazon and we were making more, doing more volume on Amazon, but it was just so much more challenges it came with. And, you know, profitability wasn't there as much because mm -hmm. you're, sometimes we were selling for less on Walmart, but with Amazon, there was so much other spend that had to come in to actually stay competitive. Mm. Um, so, you know, Walmart became a really interesting channel. It's like customers trust Walmart. They shop on Walmart. Mm. Um, you know, it's a certain, our products were a great fit for the customer. And it's like the Walmart was willing to work with sellers and they still are. They put a lot of emphasis on that. So it's like, and as opposed to Amazon was very difficult on that standpoint. So I, I really appreciated it. And I'm like, you know, you're right. We sell on these other platforms, but that's just kind of automated. Um, there was only really focus on Amazon. Why don't we just shift a lot of that focus to walmart.com? And you could be, be doing both of them. And that's why, obviously, you know, a lot of people use solution providers when they expand to Walmart because you to really put focus on a platform, you really don't have the time to put on multiple platforms. But for us personally, we just shifted our focus to walmart.com instead of being on amazon.com. And hmm. we were really able to grow the brand like that. And yeah, that's really how, you know, we grew. Um, um, you know, our brand. And then I partnered with, um, I met him, I spoke at a, a show um, approximately three years ago um, about Amazon. And one of my partners was selling, my partner now was my partner then was selling a lot on Amazon. He had like the number one product on Amazon for two years. Um, and he's like, let's build a really good, like a lot of people are just selling product, just making, yeah. you know, these, you know, mm -hmm lack just bad brands sorry just what it right. is and not really caring about the brand the products or the customer experience because they're able to just make sales but why don't we make brands with really strong foundation and you're right it does might not give you so much extra leverage in when um in the start but you're able to expand so much more you're able to grow on really strong foundations and we're seeing that now it's like when you have really strong brands really strong foundation you're able to actually really grow your brand um and there's so much more opportunity to open up so i partnered with him and we developed you know two by four which is our mm -hmm. supplement brand and yeah, and you know, because so much of, I guess a little bit later from that, it was just so much of our focus was in Walmart and growing Walmart. That's where I decided it's like a lot of these Amazon sellers that I know really well, I'm in the community. Um, I know their brands and the products. They want to expand to walmart.com. It's, it's, it's going to be too late. I mean, not too late. It's going to be so expensive soon. That's just going to be more challenging and more challenging. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's such a timely thing. And it's like a lot of these sellers, you know, need help selling on, you know, .com. So, you know, I started working on helping, you know, brands and we develop our agency Selcor where we help brands kind of onboard to dot com and, you know, leveraging different things to really help them grow on dot com. And there's so many there's so many things if you just there's there's really so many things you could do to really, you know, take it to the next level instead of just listing your product. So that's why. That's really the long short, but yeah, no, that's, that's really cool though. Awesome. I mean, it's it's like you're you know, um, you know, you made the switch over to Walmart. It was very successful, um, you know, but it wasn't like that happened overnight, and it's not like it wasn't mm. 
easy. You know, it wasn't like you just you're like, okay, I'm gonna put it on Walmart and everything's gonna be easy, right? Ex that, that's 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 not that's not how it works. There's exactly. A of, there's it's, a lot of stuff that happens in between. It's so challenging in a lot of different ways, and that's why I think it's like if you work with people who really know what they're doing on the platform, you save so much time and energy. And that's why, like, when we launch our brand on on Walmart.com, you know, we started figuring out a lot of these things, and then I connected with Eric pretty early um, yeah. at White Spider, and we're like, okay, we want to elevate our whole catalog. What could we do to really elevate our whole catalog? could do rich media across our whole catalog. We could, you know, a lot of great tools with CMS to help track our whole catalog. Now it's like, you're right. A lot of that effort of focus and staying, you know, uh, and staying really competitive is just, it's really lifted. And you could focus on, you know, some of the technicalities that you have to do as a brand owner. And I think, you know, a lot of brands are launching on .com and not putting that, either not putting the right focus themselves or not leveraging other resources. And I think, you know, just the way Walmart is, it's built for, it's, it's built for brands who are already established a bit. You know, it doesn't, mm -hmm. established doesn't mean you're selling a lot. It means you have an established product line, you have supply chain capabilities. Um, you know, you want to really list your products properly and maximize um maximize dot com and if you're not gonna if you're just gonna list them and ignore them it's just not how doc walmart.com works um so you really just need to leverage proper support to make sure that you're actually staying competitive and staying ahead of the curve and i think that's the biggest thing it's like when you have a catalog that's structured really well mm -hmm. and you're working with people who are at the front front fr like front lines of walmart when there's changes they're able to help you adapt really quickly to them and they're able to adapt you mm -hmm. to those changes and as a brand owner it's almost impossible you know, to really stay up to date with everything that's going on with walmart.com. And that's why it's really been, been really big for us. Yeah. Is that why, why you like to work with service providers? Yeah. And that's why I love working with White Spider because it's like we're at the front line. You yeah. guys are at the front lines of like what's going on in the yeah. space. You know, honestly, like neighbors, right? It's right. Like, yeah. Feel, yeah. yeah. Neighbors. Yeah. Neighbors. Yeah. Neighbors. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. we have our catalog, you know, we have our structure and, you know, we work with a lot of brands and it's like they're in the same place where it's like they have great products they have great brands and we work with them on helping them get on the platform and helping them a lot of these brands but being at the forefront of walmart is so important and yeah. that's why working with white is so important for my own brands and for a lot of our client brands where it's like we could help implement things that you know help grow these brands really quickly and help stay above and they know sometimes our clients don't even know of how quickly we're adapting to a lot of these changes and right. these changes are being made but it's worth making them help help them stay competitive and help them stay ahead of the curve mm -hmm. yeah and that's one of those things like that we were talking about earlier with the open call so i mean if you are successful at doing all these things on walmart and staying saying staying, uh, uh, ahead of the curve then the next thing that comes is open call maybe in store right exactly yeah. i love it yeah, I mean, I think that it's, you know, it takes, I mean, as we know at White Spider, it just takes significant amount of energy, attention, resources, mm -hmm. technology, know-how, and all that just to stay, you know, where Walmart is moving towards. I mean, it's a, it's a daily, it's honestly a daily it challenge. A daily it it moves is. so fast. And I tell people this all the time, Walmart moves, Walmart.com is moving way faster yes. than Amazon.com. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. So it's like, they also have a roadmap and they know exactly where they're mm -hmm. going and what they're doing. So it's like, they're moving really quickly. And it's impossible, almost impossible, I should say, as a brand owner to be really in tune with all the changes that are happening. And that's why, you know, it's so important to be able to just make those changes really quickly because otherwise you get left behind a little bit, a little bit more, a little bit yep. more until it's too late, yeah. you know? Just keeps growing. Next thing you know, you've drifted far from the shore. Far, far away. Yep. Yeah. All Eight, right. Seven. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Last question, though. So if you had three pieces of advice to give um, to I Amazon sellers that want to get on Walmart, what would those three pieces of advice be? I think number one, make sure you understand the platform. Mm. Make sure you understand who's shopping on there. Make sure you understand what the search results look like, what the pages look like. Just understand who you're dealing with, what the platform, understand it from a Walmart perspective and understand it from actually a consumer perspective. Mm -hmm. Once you have that, structure your catalog so that it actually meets those things. It meets yeah. it from a customer perspective and it meets it from a Walmart algorithm perspective. And honestly, um, you know, make sure you're working. I would suggest obviously working with service providers to make sure you're doing that because it's very hard to give it the right level of attention and really understand that. And then the third thing is just always be on top of it. Mm -hmm. um, you want to just make sure you're actually doing proper things to scale, stay competitive and actually just... Uh, people think it's a lot it's just a lot of small changes constantly yeah. being on top of it. and if yeah. you just really maintain that you're in a much better position so i i think that you just 
I always say like, and I always joke around. I'm like, if only I would have launched, you know, another few sets of workout gloves, you know, <laughs> seven years ago, I would have been retired. So it's like, you know, so it's like, by, senior, by the time you're a senior in high, high, high school, go. you retire. So don't make the same mistake with Walmart. You know, yeah. like you, you, you don't want to have to play catch up in a year. And it's like, oh, it's going to cost you $5,000, $10,000 in advertising spend to get ranked properly for this search term. It's like, why not do it now when it's yeah. like with pro properly structuring catalog, do that. So. I would say just pay a lot of attention, you know, you really focus on it and, um, you know, leverage the right relationships and the right people to help you grow and you'll be in a good position. And you, by next year, Walmart open call, you're in a good, good position to show your buyers. Here's my awesome. GMP. Yeah. Here's my listings. There you go. There you go. Show, show that you can be a good partner and they'll just keep growing with you. Right? Exactly. There you go. Awesome. Any, any parting words, Eric? No, you were really quiet on this one. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, you didn't ask me anything. I'm so interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. interesting. Yeah. More about so much better. No, I mean, I just, I'm, I'm, you know, it's stuff we've been talking about, and it's good to hear Michael talk about it because it's a, I mean, he's lived it, he's working it. You know, and whenever he came in, you know, earlier when we were talking, I was just, you know, I love the fact that you're investing in Walmart. I think that that's one of the other big keys is, is you can't just, as a brand, look at Walmart as a place just to place a product and then turn your, you can't set it and forget it. Mm -hmm. And some good points with that, you know, I mean, any retailer is looking for you to invest into that retailer and Walmart is not an exception to that, even though they're massive, you know, they are, they, as big as Walmart is, they need help to continue to be competitive against their competitors. And I uh, think that they appreciate brands like you're doing, like Mike, Michael drives. So. And who's better to invest in than Walmart? You know, like yeah. as a brand, who would you rather yeah. invest in than Walmart? You know, agreed. Agreed. So. Yeah, it's always blown my mind. Yeah, you, <laughs> you know, and even I think even like it applies not just to, you know, new brands to Walmart, but even existing ones. Like if you hear Walmart saying we're going Omni, we need you to get your catalog, your full catalog in at Walmart. We want you to be digitally excellent. We need your quality scores as high as they can be. We need your rich media. We got videos in 360s. We want that. You know, all these things that Walmart says all the time, I don't see brands like jumping jumping in in a strong way. And it's been five years and plus more that we've watched <laughs> yeah. this happen. And it's good to have Michael come in and give that testimony just as a brand selling at Walmart. You know, that, yeah, we have Amazon sellers get over to Walmart and what that looks like. But it also is ones that are even at Walmart. Like, you're ahead of a lot of, I've seen, major brands that just have not accelerated that part. Like, they're kind of still in limbo trying to guess, is this a big, is this really Should something I worth, this? Should I do yeah. this? And, I mean, is it really that important? I mean, I'm looking at my spreadsheet. Not Life's not a spreadsheet. <laughs> business is it not? Are you sure? Because like, I've seen a lot of spreadsheets here. <laughs> well, I know, but business isn't a spreadsheet too. And I think we lose that a lot of times, right? And I mean, and we can get pulled down into that. But the reality is, is that, you know, who? why is Walmart making these changes? They don't make changes because they just want to. They're making changes because they're adapting to the customer, the shopper. They have the first ear at what the shopper's demanding. As a brand, it's a great idea to follow that as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. And like Michael said, I love it. Little things at a time. Like if you can catch up, like folks that I have, like when the internet became real to a lot of brands. Yeah. Back when back the pandemic yeah, happened, right? When everybody's like, oh my gosh. You know, but oh, everything's online. But to try to scale that up and catch up for two years worth of not investing was a significant investment. But guess what? I can venture to say that even if you did spend that to catch up, you have already fallen back behind because you Schedule. didn't accelerate that even further. Mm -hmm. And so you're exactly right. In in the game of digital, who's first, whoever's first is, is going to win. I mean, that unlike a lot of other types of businesses or, or channels or models, in the online space, if you're first, you're winning mm -hmm. because it's all about that shelf placement. It's all about that conversion. I mean, be first, right? I love just that. Just be first. And just one more thing is on the spreadsheet thing. And it's like, that's exactly what it is. It's like, don't think of it like, oh, these are my metrics. Like, think of it from a consumer set. Like, yes. spend time on the platform. Look on walmart.com. That's right. Like, for us, like, we go into stores and we see how customers shop. It's the same concept. We go on .com. We search around. Like, see how the environment is and see what Walmart's looking for. Speak to these buyers. Like, you know, and it just, it makes so much of a difference. And people are looking at it a little too analytically. And it's like, there's... It, missed opportunity it is you gotta have a vision like yeah. you know, like michael because he's <laughs> you, you guys know, are both like animated, guys. You guys yeah. animated but, I mean, something, but something to you know like when i what i like what michael's gonna here's what's gonna happen michael right he's gonna get his product in store he's already digitally first and he's been powering and investing and being granular about that and staying ahead of the time 
right, with Walmart. He's going to go to that meeting and he's going to blow the minds of that merchant, right? And crush it. And she or he will be like, you're exactly the type of brand that we're looking for. Because by the way, some of my big brands that are in the category are not even close to the way and that it, you are. And it's hilarious because they have one brand who is our competitor who who's, who was actually voted their number one Walmart vendor. Yeah. Um, and actually, they have like um, 20 SKUs in the aisle. And we sell more on .com than all those SKUs. And all those SKUs get like, you know, positioned because they're 1P and all yeah. that stuff. Uh-huh. And we sell more than all those SKUs. So it's like. And I bet you know what <laughs> their catalog looks like online. Exactly. Uh-huh. You yeah. know, and he yeah. knows he's coming up and smoking them. <laughs> and so you're going to come there with a visual representation with numbers showing .com sales. And a merchant's going to go, you know what? I've got to meet my customer's demand because they're becoming digitally first. Mm-hmm. And what's going to happen is, is. When Michael gets in, he's going to come in and he's going to be like, okay, this is an omni-channel play. He's not going to come into the stores like, okay, I got a store side business and I have a dot-com business. He's going to be like, it's all the same thing. Wait a minute. You mean you're going to put me in 2,500 or 5,000 stores and every one of those stores is basically now a fulfillment center for me as a brand, as Michael. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I'm going to crush it omni-channel because guess what? Walmart's got a drone freaking shop box or whatever at this store that's launching drones and they're delivering with autonomous vehicles and now everything's a delivery method and so michael's gonna be going like how do i get to be the first on the top when somebody shops delivery i gotta make sure that check mark is checked checked because yep. i don't want to miss that sale that's the new way that the customer wants yep. it and he's going to continue to dominate Yay. That's yeah. what's going to happen. Yeah. yeah i'm speaking it bro yeah, i know it's going to happen it's but coming, you, it's because it's not spreadsheet the customer's changing and evolving with the technology. Walmart's evolving and changing with the customer. Brands that evolve and change with Walmart are going to conquer. Mm-hmm. And we're already seeing it play out, man. I mean, we're seeing people, one P's that have done really well in the past, accelerating their growth because they're following along with what Walmart's asked them to do. And that's what Michael's doing. And I love the fact, like earlier you showed me this video that he's going to show these merchants about about what your company is. Yeah, yeah, we saw that. And yeah, that's yeah, it's, it's beautiful. Yeah. I mean, it's just really beautifully well done. done because you cared and you put your your foot forward on it. Well yeah. done, man. Awesome. Thank you so much. Well, I'm excited. It's going to be it's yeah. going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah be awesome. and we're going to see. We're going to have to come back here yeah. like a month or two yeah. to see if Eric's predictions about your future where it came came through. <laughs> it's true. See if he really is manifested it. It's <laughs> happening. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the Oracle. The Oracle, Eric. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for being here and we really appreciate it. We'll see you guys next time. Awesome.